Under the double declining balance method, we observed in the final year our depreciation expense was limited to $442 because we did not want to depreciate our asset below its salvage value. Another issue with double declining balance depreciation method is if we have a relatively low salvage value. Notice, using the declining balance method, we never fully depreciate our asset. We never reach, that is, our salvage value using that declining balance method. Companies handle this by switching to the straight line method at the point in time where the straight line method would have given us a higher depreciation expense. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Under our double declining balance method, our depreciation expense in the first year will be our 40% multiplied by our net book value, which is $96,000. So our double declining balance method, our expense would be $38,400. Straight line, our expense would be, we're going to take our estimated cost of $96,000, subtract off our estimated salvage of $1,000, and divide that by the estimated useful life of five years. And we get an annual expense under the straight line method of $19,000. We can compare our double declining balance method with that $19,000 straight line expense every year over the five year period. In the first year, we would take the double declining balance method because it provides a higher depreciation expense. So we take $38,400 in depreciation, which brings our carrying value, our net book value, down to $57,600. Under the declining balance method, our depreciation expense in the next year would be $23,000. When we compare this with a straight line amount of $19,000, we again would select the double declining balance amount. So in the second year, we take the $23,000 in depreciation expense, which brings our net book value or carrying value down to $34,560. In the third year, our expense using the double declining balance method would be $13,824. Since the $19,000 straight line amount is higher we would at this point in time switch over to the straight line method. So in the third year, we take $19,000 in depreciation expense. And of course, in further years, the double declining balance method will result in a lower depreciation expense than under straight line. So we'll remain on the straight line basis. But of course, we will want to make sure that we don't depreciate our asset below its uh, salvage value. So in the fourth year, we will limit ourselves to $14,560 in depreciation expense, and then in the fifth year, we won't take any depreciation expense at all since we've reached the salvage value. So again, in the third year, when we compare the amount of depreciation expense we would have taken under straight line with the double declining amount, the straight line is greater, so at that point in time, we switch over to the straight line method.